coming. So um, yeah, thank you so much for joining. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, how we're teaching people applied AI uh, with AI for good or uh, SDG, Sustainable Development Goal challenges. And um, you know, I was thinking about um, how I wanted to start this, and and I can imagine that uh, many of you uh, have no clue who I am. Uh, so I'm just going to start with my personal story because that's also um, also really. Uh, uh, you know, rolls into uh, what we're doing with Fruit Punch AI. So I actually I actually have a, a, a background in, I, once I wanted to go to art school and um, and uh, until I, I, I went to an open day at the Technical University of Eindhoven. And this is a picture of that day is a uh, little buster, um, severely uh, less defined uh, jawline. That's the big difference uh, with, with now and the rest is uh, pretty much the same. And uh, I basically fell in love with uh, with uh, with robots first, and um, and as a as a boy, I wanted to um, you know my first my first idea to kind of uh, have a positive impact on the world, and uh, and do something with technology was to start creating uh, well study to create um, uh, robotic prosthesis. So for people that lost an arm, so I uh, I went and studied uh, studied uh, mechanical engineering. Um, with a specialization in neuroscience, actually, and um, and well, that that went all fine and dandy, and uh, and that's also when I got my first um, when I got my first uh, taste of teaching. So I um, I started teaching uh, mostly um, mostly chemistry to um, to um, well uh, secondary school students and uh, exam year students. And uh, do I have to respond to the to the questions in the chat? Oh, love the name. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll get into the name later. There's a there's a story behind the name. We can do that afterwards, maybe. Um, so I started teaching, um, and uh, I did that for about two years, and uh, and then I was also uh, you know finishing up my studies and doing uh, research into um, into uh, neuroscience, a neuroscience topic. Um, so what what I was doing was um, I was creating a, an environment in which three D brain structures could grow for um, on the one side. Uh, uh, research into Alzheimer medication, and on the other side, uh, actually something that's also very exciting, which is brain-computer interfacing. And um, well, then they asked me, you know, uh, I was I was doing pretty well with the research. Like, do you want to continue? Do you want to do you want to join our uh, our research group? And uh, I said no because um, because I saw myself as more of an entrepreneur. And, uh, and, and this, you know, the field of neuroscience really uh, kind of the, uh, before that uh, was going to be commercial, really, um, uh, is still going to take like another 15 years. So then I thought, what is like the most relevant field right now that I can get into and have a direct positive impact on the world? And, um, and that's, that's how I got into coding and data science. So that was actually quite late. Uh, I think I was uh, I was 21 at the time, so uh, so I'm uh, quite late to coding, and basically from this, you know, from my background in in education and technology, um, I I instantly saw this this huge lack because I because I wanted to get with the background in mechanical engineering, I wanted to get into data science and AI, and uh, of course there were some online courses and all that, but um, and I could also follow more theoretical courses in, at the university. Uh, but there wasn't really any uh, community or, or place where I could, you know, learn about the real world applications of AI, just just really, you know, challenge based learning. Um, so that's when I decided to uh, set up Fruit Punch AI as a, as a community to teach people applied AI. So the first thing that we uh, that we uh, went to organize um, was actually an AI esports competition because we thought like. Okay, so what do nerds like, right? What do we like? We like to play video games. Uh, so how are we gonna motivate engineering students to, uh, to learn about applied AI? Well, through video games. So um, the first thing, oh, ah, there we go. The first thing that we, uh, that we organized was an AI esports competition. And uh, for this, we actually built uh, an entire uh, game in Unity and uh, um, in which the theme was uh, human AI collaboration. So, uh, so the teams uh, with people from all over the world, uh, uh, 120 people uh, joined in, uh, in 12 different teams uh, or 12 or 15 different teams. 
Um, and their goal was to, um, to code this agent, this uh, deep reinforcement learning agent uh, that was gonna you know, run through this maze, collect fruits and, uh, and avoid traps. And then it was being helped by a human agent. And, uh, and this, this human AI duo um, would compete against other human AI duos that were you know, laying traps, collecting fruits. Um, so that was the, that was the first thing that we uh, that we organized, and uh, and we were also doing a lot of educational events, you know, just uh, just more uh, more on a local community uh, level, um, organizing educational events in Eindhoven, and uh, and then we um, we started to well basically think more about okay, so now we're teaching people applied AI. But what is missing here is really uh, is really a sense of morality, and um, and something that I that I um, well at first I didn't find it strange because I didn't really think about it, but that I um, that became more and more strange to me is kind of the the lack of morality that is included in uh, in engineering education. So we did get uh, like a mandatory course in um, in ethics. Um, and, um, uh, but, but that was, that was about it. And when, you know, when we were being told about all these different technologies, there was very little speak about, um, about what the, what the eventual, you know, the, the problem for humanity that this, that this, uh, technology is solving. And I think exactly this is the, is, is where a lot of problems arise, right? Like if we look at, if we look at the, the real dangers of artificial intelligence, um, which I, at the moment, mostly uh, mostly count towards uh, stuff like uh, social media, um, and uh, not as much towards uh, you know doomsday uh, terminator like scenarios. Um, then, uh, then what we see is that these are created; these technologies are created by engineers that you know they're just hacking together a, a cool gadget, basically. Um, and not thinking about uh, the the possible you know the possible consequences and uh, and basically every presentation at the university about any technology is also always you know really excited about the high tech uh, of the technology uh, but very little about uh, about the impact on real world uh, challenges uh, the positive or negative impact um, so that's when we decided to uh, kind of uh, make this switch of not only teaching people applied AI, but teaching people applied AI with real world AI challenges, uh, real world AI for good challenges. So now our, our, uh, our mission is to educate, connect, develop. So that's providing free applied AI education and certification, um, bring together people, uh, people from around the globe, because we think this is an extremely important part, right? Uh, it's uh, this diversity of perspective, which is incredibly important to, uh, you know, creating, um, creating bias free um, uh, algorithms, and, uh, and, and basically catching the, you know, catching what it's about, it's catching the faults in your own thinking, and, and solving challenges linked directly to the sustainable development goals. Um, and uh, and when we set this goal, um, the first thing that we, the first challenge that we took up was uh, AI for wildlife. So uh, the, the story behind this is actually um, is actually a, <laughs> not not really your your typical uh, your typical uh, kind of uh, hero world saver journey. Um, it was it was more that uh, that you know we were thinking about um, these different themes al along basically lines along which um, we wanted to start organizing AI for good challenges. Uh, we've, we had organized an event around, you know, um, uh, to kind of a, a small hackathon to see how we can apply AI to take on uh, the climate crisis. And, uh, and then my girlfriend uh, at the time um, asked me, well, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's summer. Uh, can we go? Can we go on holiday? Um, I want to go to South Africa. And uh, I said, well, uh, as in kind of like a when pigs can fly kind of scenario, I said, well, um, we'll go to South Africa if I can find something for work there, because I've uh, I have a huge uh, um, flying uh, flying shame, flight shame, I think it's called, you know, 
just for the carbon dioxide that uh, that, that you uh, that you the, the plane expels um, when you uh, when you travel long distances. Um, so so that was I, I thought that was it. And then I was telling this story to another friend of mine, and um, and she told me, well, I, I know this this guy from South Africa, and he's uh, he's in the Netherlands now. So and, and and I thought he wanted to do something with uh, you know applying AI to uh, to stop poaching in South Africa, and uh, so I, I went up to uh, I went up to him in uh, in Nijmegen where, where he was at the moment, and uh, and we had a chat, and it turned out that you know he had an AI consultancy uh, Cape AI in in South Africa, and um, and he wanted to do he wanted to do something with AI about this poaching crisis. And, uh, and I said, well, okay, let's do a call to action, right? And uh, let's just see what happens. So this is this, this image I made uh, uh, on, the, on the car ride to, to some event. Um, and I thought, what the heck, uh, we'll see what happens. And, uh, and we actually got an overwhelming response of, uh, of a lot of um, private uh, reserves, uh, mostly private reserves at that point. Um, that wanted to work together with us, you know, to uh, to use artificial intelligence to see how we can use AI um, to to solve their poaching problem. Um, so, so then I was uh, all out of reasons uh, not to go to South Africa. So I decided to go to South Africa, um, and uh, and I arrived at in, uh, in in Cape Town. And uh, and and you know we were contacting all these different parties and setting up meetings. And uh, then all of a sudden, we got a call from uh, from a guy named uh, Robbie, uh, uh, Robbie Beninka, um, and uh, and he said we're working from uh, Pilensburg, so that's uh, that's near uh, for the people that know the geography, uh, that's near uh, Pretoria and uh, Johannesburg in South Africa, so that's a bit north, um, and uh, we're working in this uh, national reserve. And uh, and we're we're flying with drones to to detect poachers in night, um, and we could really use you know we we, we have to automate this process because uh, like we're just not able to to fly all the time because it's uh, you know it's just too expensive in terms of uh, manpower because they were you know uh, operating this drone with with four people um, and uh, and he said like we, we need the smarts. Right. So uh, so then we basically because it, the, like the big difference between private reserves and, and national reserves is that these national reserves are way bigger uh, and they also have way less resources. Right. The private reserves are uh, generally um, pretty wealthy uh, because, you know, they have uh, they have like the, the, the big game hunting and they cater towards uh, rich, uh, rich people from, uh, you know, all over the world. Um, and uh, and these national reserves are you know where, where the problem of poaching is the is the is, well is the is the most difficult really. So um, so we decided to you know drive drive to them and uh, and basically get a lay of the land and they were doing some very interesting stuff there and um, and and a lot of a lot of places you know where we could actually help because they were using uh, thermal cameras on these uh, on these drones so uh, so we basically together with them we made a plan of like how can we take this huge project and cut it up into multiple ai challenges and uh, and well and that's what we did and then um, and then we went back to to the netherlands and uh, and then it was actually then it was actually quiet for a while um, because this uh, this new path uh, of you know doing AI for good challenges, expanding the community, uh, it was all very exciting. But um, at the time, I was still doing uh, I was still doing uh, a pre master in uh, in data science because I uh, you know I wanted to to make this switch. Uh, so I was still studying while uh, setting up this community and doing all this stuff. Um, and uh, and I had to make a choice, right? I had to make a choice. Do I want to go? So this is this is my actual process, um, uh, which is that if I have to make a big choice, I just draw out all the all the different uh, uh, paths that are in front of me. So do I want to go for knowledge is power? Basically, uh, basically, uh, you know, continue on the path that I was on uh, and uh, do do my masters in uh, in uh, uh, data science and engineering. 
um, do I want to go, you know, make fruit punch, which at that moment was, um, it was uh, a, a foundation still. So foundation and a volunteer uh, initiative. Uh, do I want to bootstrap this and, and try and build it into a business um just uh just uh, on sheer willpower uh or which was the third option that came uh, came looking around the corner at that moment um do i want to go for an investment so really go the you know the startup route um because uh, i was talking with some investors at the time and uh well i decided to go for the investment there there was a little bias in the drawing already because it's uh, it's in the middle as you can see um, and uh, uh, and I also I also I was chatting with uh, with a professor, uh, a friend of mine at the, at the university, and he told me, Buster, <laughs> between you and me, um, so I'm not going to say who this guy is, uh, because this is, of course, a big taboo in uh, in, the, uh, you know, university world. But he said, between you and me, I think you're going to learn a hell of a lot more if you go for this investment than when you're going to do a master right now. Um, so that was, uh, you know, that was the. Um, uh, the, the the final the final drop in the bucket basically that was needed to um, to get me to choose this route so I went for the investment um, but that did mean that you know this 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 vision that I had of, of providing free AI education uh, you know uniting this global community solving challenges linked to the sustainable development goals I needed to you know think of a, of a business model um, that um, that would not compromise these values, obviously. So, so there's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of companies in the world that you know do um, philan phil philanthrop. Uh, I don't, I can't, <laughs> I can't with that word. Um, that are doing nonprofit kind of stuff on the side, uh, but in the end, it's always you know about um, about donating uh, what I call the evening and weekend hours, or uh, you know donating the profit of. Uh, of their business so you know if you look at any organization um, that is uh, that is doing good stuff for the world um, uh, google microsoft whatever um, doing amazing stuff but it's but it's still all uh, you know in the profit margins of the thing that they're really really earning money with and you know i i thought about this for a while to do it like that um but that just just i maybe it's maybe it's my impatience uh, but i i just couldn't uh, i just couldn't go for that path so i knew that i had to uh, you know build uh, build a, a startup uh, business model that um, that had this quality that the more uh, the more money we earn the more good we do and the more good we do the more money we earn so basically perfect alignment right because i believe that i believe that if there's not perfect alignment between these two, um, then what you're going to get is the same as when you know two two trains are on different tracks. Uh, they can be very close in the beginning, but there's some point at which one of those tracks, one of the two tracks, is going to you know go in a different direction, and then and then which is basically the moment that you can see that when when crisis hits, and when crisis hits and you're a startup and you have investors, you just simply have to go for the path that makes you money. So. I knew that I had to make a model where, um, where um, you know, that when we're making money, we're doing good things, just by the very definition. Um, and this, uh, this I really started to believe in, right? So, um, and what we what we basically uh, landed on is um, is building a platform for AI talent development. So there's a there's a there's a big ask for uh, for 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 uh, AI talent in the world. Um, and there is, uh, there is not only uh, in existing organizations, uh, you know, corporates um, that want to educate their, their, um, their employees to, uh, to, you know, be a kind of a, a data science savvy, uh, but of course also educate new engineers. Um, so, so that's, what we, that's what we decided to focus on uh, because we really have this problem, you know, lack of good AI engineers in the world um uh, tencent uh, also i don't know if you guys know tencent but that's a big investor from uh, um from uh, um, asia um they also identified as the big bottleneck of the application of ai uh, as being uh, education um and uh, and we have a problem that you know with uh, with 
with the current education systems, and this might be a bit a uh, bit rough uh, in this in this crowd, but um, they uh, uh, but but I think this is common knowledge now. Uh, engineers aren't taught how to apply AI in the real world, right? They're they're taught this uh, you know this five percent. Um, which is um, which is the theory and the machine of the machine learning models, um, and they're they're also taught a little bit with you know uh, with kind of uh, toy challenges um, that have uh, you know that have perfectly clean data sets and uh, and you know no stakeholder management. Uh, you don't have to you know define the problem define the the challenge yourself right or the problem uh, problem solving direction you only have to do this uh, this this uh, you know this this small engineering part which is which is really only five uh, percent um, so um, and as a result AI is not reaching its potential positive impact so to solve humanity's greatest challenges we need to educate AI engineers at scale and redefine how we solve these problems and um, and the solution, our solution is a new kind of talent development. So we're teaching people, we're developing their AI skills with real world AI for good challenges. So a real world challenge means stuff like uh, AI for wildlife, which I just just explained, um, where um, just a, a sub, a, basically a challenge within this larger project is. Um, creating a model that can detect the poachers on the thermal cameras, right? So right now there's, um, there's, uh, and I think it's the first one, oh no, it's the second one here. So right now we have, um, we have this drone and they have to look at this grayscale image throughout the night and see if they can find, uh, you know, if they can see if there's uh, poachers on this screen, but that's, um, that, that's very difficult to do because it's, uh, you know, you're, um, you're, you're, on a, on a lack of sleep, uh, looking at a, at a grayscale image for eight hours at a time. Um, so this is, a, this is very prone to human error. So this is the first, the first challenge that we're taking on. And uh, here in the, in the left corner, you see the team that is working on that. So that's uh, 25 amazing people from all over the world um, that are collaborating in solving this challenge, which is uh, which is really really an amazing thing to see, and it's people from all different levels as well. That's the beauty about challenge-based education: is that when you have people um, that um, you know that have um, uh, basically a small group that has very little experience, you have a small group that has more experience, but maybe wants to learn more about you know uh, leading a group um, or uh, doing stakeholder management, that kind of stuff or they're just very passionate about the topic. And then you have like a, uh, basically a middle group of, of maybe 10 people that, uh, that have okay-ish skills, but are still developing themselves. Then you get this, this wonderful mix in which there's a lot of peer-to-peer -peer learning, right? Everybody has a different background, uh, different cultures, um, different personalities, uh, and, uh, you know, and different technical expertise, um, which makes for, for, a, for a beautiful learning process. And, um, and it's actually, you know, if, if you don't want to take my word on this, then, uh, you know, take Elon uh, and Jeff Bezos's word on it, that getting a job in data science or AI means b building a portfolio rather than getting a degree. So, so this is, you know, this basically all the, all the arrows are pointing in the direction of, uh, of challenge-based learning. And, um, and it's, it's been going quite well so far because we have uh, built up a community of uh, around a thousand members around the globe already. Um, uh, on all inhabited continents, and um, and you know we're doing a couple of amazing challenges. So so I just uh, talked about uh, AI for wildlife. Um, we're also doing a couple of AI for health challenges. Um, and again here, you know, it's not technology push like uh, like a lot a lot of what we see happening already. It's really uh, it's really technology pool in the sense that we sit together with the doctors, so the teams that are doing the AI for health challenges. They uh, they sit together directly with the doctors and uh, and start discussing with them. Okay, what is the thing that you need most right now? What is basically the most tedious or boring part or the most error prone part of your daily job? And how can we help you there? And and there's just you know um, this is makes just for for very relevant challenges. Also, this process of of uh, you know 
looking together with, for, for, the, for our members, looking together with the doctors uh, at uh, how we can solve their problems. You know, this is something that you just simply can't get in any other way than working with real world stakeholders. Um, and they're doing, uh, doing amazing stuff. So, so this is, uh, um, they're doing four challenges now, but just to take the example here of lung segmentation, right? So it's basically just drawing, drawing a line around the lungs so it can be fed into another machine and, uh, and the radiologist can look at it. But right now, the radiologists have to do this themselves, right? So, so an, an insane amount of hours of these specialists are being wasted on a task that is, that is not even their specialty, right? It's just drawing a line around the lungs. And we're automating this with, uh, with deep learning. And, uh, and the interesting thing here is that, you know, if you're just teaching people, teaching computer scientists about uh, the, what you can do with deep learning, um, then you're never gonna, they're never gonna think on their own. They're never gonna think about, um, about you know, developing a solution like this. Um, so that's why this, you know, diversity of, uh, of domains is also really important. Um, and uh, I have a little bit of a bias because I'm, I'm not from, uh, from a data science or a computer science background myself, of course. Mm. And, uh, you know, we're doing, um, we're also doing other challenges, but we can go into this uh, for a very long time. So maybe uh, vis visit that later. Um, so, uh, and, you know, to, to basically scale up these efforts, because this is, uh, you know, this is all very nice. Um, but uh, you might think like, so how are you going to, how are you going to expand this globally? Um, we're, we're building this platform. So with each challenge that uh, one of our members uh, completes, they earn points towards their skill profile. So uh, their skill profile is, uh, that's, that's the part that we're building right now. So on the right here, you can see, um, uh, ah, I see another, uh, I see another question. Oh, that's a link. Um, right now on the, oh, oh wait, sorry. I think there's a, for some reason when I'm sharing, uh, I can't use the arrows. Um, so on the right here, you, you see, um, you see the, uh, the platform that we have right now. So, which is, uh, mostly just focused on, uh, you know, that we can host events and uh, people can uh, join challenges and all that kind of stuff. And the things that we're developing right now is this whole system uh, of automating the, um, the, uh, the peer reviews uh, in, that people do in the challenges. So that's uh, with a combination of peer review and stakeholder assessment of the result of the project. Uh, that's how they basically earn uh, points towards a skill profile. And uh, this is in hard skills and soft skills. So, um, so you can see here just the example of you know ML ops, uh, but also team management or communication that they're uh, that they're earning points towards. And um, you know this is this is this way students our students can also really follow their own learning journey, right? So really just choose the kind of challenges and topics that they're interested in, um, and uh, and and build their own profile and. Uh, and this is uh, this is a very motivating way of learning uh, we found for for a lot of students, and um, so the, so just to give you an overview again of, of what an AI for Good challenge is uh, in our in our book, um, it's it's twenty five to fifty uh, AI engineers, very diverse cultures and domains uh, that are joining this challenge. Uh, the goal is to go from uh, an AI prototype within two months or two to three months. Um, but uh, the goal here is, uh, is two months uh, to really go from problem and data to an integrated solution. And, uh, you know, there's a, there's a couple of uh, events that we host uh, during, the, uh, during the, uh, the period. We have uh, always do a domain masterclass and an AI masterclass that's linked to the, to the specific challenge. And then we do, uh, you know, um, a de a demo day and an update event uh, in the middle. Um, and then, of course, there's the, you know, there's the assessment, uh, the peer review and the stakeholder assessment that, um, that uh, goes into this. And each challenge is organized together with, uh, you know, a partner. Um, so something that we're, uh, that we're piloting, that we're piloting now uh, in Eindhoven first, because that's just, uh, you know, the logical first place to go. Um, but that we, uh, we want to expand to a lot of places around the world is, uh, is this idea of an AI for good lab. So, an AI for Good Lab is basically 
uh, a collaboration with an institute or a campus, uh, you know, university uh, around a certain theme. So in Eindhoven, this is around AI for health, because uh, he, of course, obviously, uh, Philips is, uh, you know, Philips, uh, which is a company that is now mostly focused on uh, not light bulbs anymore, but uh, medical technology. Um, once founded the Technic University of Eindhoven. Uh, so a lot, the, the really advanced stuff happening in the AI for health uh, um, um, uh, topic. And uh, so, so that's so that's what the AI for Good Lab in Eindhoven is about, and that means just uh, at least four challenges per year per uh, per theme. So, so we have this AI for Health theme, and we have four uh, AI for Health challenges um, in Eindhoven um, around this topic. Um, and you know, an important thing is that the challenges are still open to everyone, but it's then first served to the you know to the students or. Uh, members around that uh, around that uh, area and then uh, it's important that it's uh, themed in one of the sustainable development goals so AI for health is of course uh, uh, good health and well-being um, and uh, and another uh, you know benefit is that uh, we have a lot of contributors in our community that are constantly creating uh, educational content so uh, this is uh, you know ai boot camps uh, right now we have a deep reinforcement learning track running we have a couple of uh, I, th I think we have a master class with ibm coming up again um, so there's constantly stuff going on that you know people can join as well uh, to uh, to keep educating themselves and this they also would get access to do so, um, so I don't, I don't know, uh, I don't know what all your uh, functions are at uh, at the universities or uh, or the organizations that you work at, but um, this is something that I would like you to uh, kind of entertain to do this collaboration uh, on a on an AI for Good uh, theme to uh, organize a lab together. Um, we're right now we're in talks with also a neuroscience institute uh, to just give an idea to do one uh, around uh, mental health. Um, and um, and of course uh, we're looking for uh, you know a good place for our uh, AI for wildlife uh, project to land as well. Um, so yeah, uh, this is basically uh, this is basically what we're doing with Fruit Punch AI, and the the goal is really to you know build a global community of AI engineers that can solve humanity's greatest challenges. And uh, I think we're uh, well on our way. So uh, I would invite you to join the AI for Good revolution. And uh, let's collaborate. So you can find my details here. And uh, we're very open to, you know, organize challenges together, um, uh, set up an AI for good lab, and uh, or just, uh, you know, explore what we can do together. Yeah. And uh, that's me. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Buster. That was a very inspiring story, I think, uh, starting from your own personal uh, story and, and then opening it up to the, let's say, the global world. Uh, I think that uh, that sparked maybe some uh, questions. Uh, I yeah. will have a look at, uh, uh, yeah. Um, I'll sharing. There you I, go. Yeah. OK, great. Um, and, yeah, Alison, there was more a joke about the, the, the name of the company. Uh, Nur uh, mentioned the link. Uh, Milena has a question. Milena, yeah. My question is, uh, first of all, Buster, thanks so much. Uh, I, I love that we had a chance to meet uh, around a month ago, really. Thanks, thanks to Nur. So <laughs> great connection. This network is all about this, really. Uh, very, very inspiring. I love that. Uh, and I love learning more about uh, Fruit Punch. And uh, my question is, what was the most challenging when developing your sustainable business plan? And if you have any advices for other entrepreneurs? Oh, that's a very good question. Um, what was the most challenging? Well, so uh, so in, in hindsight, like in a presentation like this, it uh, doesn't really do it right because I, uh, I really spent half a year just tormenting myself <laughs> over <laughs> trying to come up with a model that would that would uh, you know work and not compromise our values and in hindsight it's all very easy um what was the most challenging um well uh, the, the most the most challenging is really the core of it which is um which is you know coming up with a model that that you don't want to compromise on being profitable um, and there's there's a really big kind of uh, um, uh, taboo around this, I think, um, in uh, um, 
yeah well it's 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 kind of it's kind of a taboo that you like you either have to be a business and then there's a whole group of people that uh, just get their salaries also from somewhere but uh, that are not entrepreneurs and that um that um then kind of uh, look at you as a dirty capitalist and uh and and then and then so you you can either be the dirty capitalist or you have to uh you know um uh, just to go full non-profit um but so th so the most challenging part here is to you know really go for this this startup model where you have have a perspective on you know a lot of profit um and not compromise on your on your profit model while also not compromising in any sense on your values and i think we found that with fruit punch ai because um, this is something that I that I uh, well that I should should have said in my presentation, but uh, you know what we're trying to teach people is um, is this AI for good mindset, which is um, which is really uh, not just about um, directly taking on the sustainable development goals, but is about you know this um, this way of thinking in which you in which as an engineer you take you take full responsibility from you know the thing that you're building all the way to to all the possible applications that it might have and um and and we believe that if we educate people in this way that not just the people that went not just when they're doing ai for good challenges with us but also when they go and work at companies after after you know they've been educated by us um that they will carry this this mindset with them and basically cause bottom-up change in organizations around the world so that's the reason why why i really believe that we have a, a perfect match between uh, earning money and uh, and having a positive impact um because of course of course with us they're doing the ai for good challenges but they're also you know carrying this this mindset with them and i really believe that if you if you show people um that that you know they can that the things that they do have an have an actual post can have an actual positive impact on the world, which is something that I think a lot of people don't really believe in anymore. Um, I think that if you show them this, that that's basically a door that you open and that won't close anymore after that. Um, but that was that was that was very challenging. I can't say like the exact thing why it was so challenging, but I know that it almost drove me insane. So I hope that's <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a good summary. Can I can I have one more? Because what you said is uh, is actually interesting. Do you think that this kind of mindset should uh, that we should change the mind, this kind of mindset globally, like in the ed tech sector in general, or or in the technological sector in general, all when thinking about innovation, or is it something for this one sector that you are in? Uh, and, and people who would like to have no profit organizations and, and sh should go for it or should should it grow to other other yeah. businesses as well no that's a, that's that's again a very good question because because the, like the reason that i chose that i chose the field of you know that i chose specifically education and um and also artificial intelligence is because i believe that you know ai is just humanity's most powerful tool at this point or potentially humanity's most powerful tool Maybe at the moment it's it's still the internet, but I don't know how to measure those things against each other. Um, and 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 then and then if that's humanity's most powerful tool, I think the the most powerful way to make a change is education. So that so that's why it's you know so logical to, for me to teach people AI, um, AI for good. But I think that that just uh, at least at least the whole the whole of ad tech should should make uh, you know a shift towards um yeah hmm. it's it's i have a lot of discussions with my with my co-founder about this as well but i really think that i really think that uh, in everything that we teach people we should give them this perspective of morality and that's uh, and that that's very often lost um and so i think that's that's not something that's unique to ai right um so that's basically counts for uh, every sector mm -hmm. is that an answer to your question yes it is thanks so thanks. much cool. okay 
thank you. Um, I, I think that uh, there is in the chat a discussion going on uh, sparked by Tony's uh, remark. Uh, Tony, uh, maybe you can um, ask your question uh, to Buster. Yes, well, uh, thank you very much, Buster, for a very inspiring presentation. And I think yeah. wonderful, you just gave such a great input into why we should have non-profit uh, ed tech in supporting um, education and sustainable innovation. But my question above that is, you know, um, is, is the focus on changing the engineering mindset, uh, you know, um, absolutely yeah. in, 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 in the way they um, develop technology in yeah. really considering human impact. But what about a, a multidisciplinary student approach? Right. On AI projects, you know, like people who are working in behavioral science. Yeah. Which so, be like my field of, yeah. Yeah. So, 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 that, so that's maybe my, uh, I, my, my, I just use the wrong words because really in our community, we, um, I talk about engineers, uh, but really what I should talk about is engineers and enablers. Um, so in our community, we have people from all different backgrounds. So there, there is a focus on engineers. I would say that, you know, about, um, about 70%, 70%, 80% of the people in our community and in our projects are engineers at this point. Um, but we already have uh, in each project. So for, for example, AI for Wildlife, we have an, an ethicist um, uh, with a law background. We have uh, somebody with a, with a doctorate in ecology and we have um, a psychologist as well in there. Um, so, so we already, we already uh, try to kind of pull people from other domains into these challenges as well. So this is a very good question and I, and I didn't uh, make that clear enough in, in my presentation, but we already try to, to uh, include people from all different domains and it works really well in these uh, challenges, but it also works really well in you know, the platform that we're building because within, within our platform, the skill profile that I talked about, you, you can earn points towards all these different aspects. And it's not just these AI hard skills, it's all the, you know, all the uh, soft skills as well, uh, which means that you can basically through our program, you can also join challenges without actually doing any coding. Uh, but as long as you are able to contribute in a meaningful way, which means that you're learning about like to communicate with engineers, uh, understand the problems around data, information gathering and all that kind of stuff and can give your input, which, which can be on behavioral psychology or you know, ethics or law or whatever, um, then you can, you're, you're still earning your profile uh, within our community. Uh, so that's something that we try to integrate. And so it's, it's a very good point. Yeah, thank you. I can see also that uh, Alison was making comments here in the in the chat. Thanks, Alison, for that. And she said here that she thinks that the most powerful tool is ourselves, human brains and actions. But the AI will definitely help. What do you think about it? No, no, that's that's. I mean, that's absolutely true. That's that's why we. That's why I focus on um, you know education and mindset change. Um, that is like, but uh, yeah, the reason the reason why I why i would call yeah i mean that's <laughs> then we have to get into very philosophical discussion i guess about um where basically um, we end and uh, the tools begin uh, because of course you could call our brain a tool um but uh, uh yeah <laughs> i think i think they're they're in the, i'm just drawing a line somewhere and i'm calling the brain uh, and ourselves as just being part of ourselves and the and the tool being something that we use to achieve a certain goal uh, but i i think i agree <laughs> and, uh, tony uh, is uh, trying to trick you into doing our homework for this afternoon <laughs> okay okay <laughs> try me try me yeah it's just yeah Great argument for the non-profit. I'll just put that in there. It's it's a great argument for the non-profit, but, but you do know that we're for profit, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, of course. <laughs> this, afternoon, this afternoon we will have a discussion. Uh, yeah. We'll have a, this Oxford debate between uh, two different groups and we'll be uh, talking about should EdTech be driven by profit or non-profit organization? Yeah. And I wonder in which team would you be if you could choose? 
if I could choose, well, if I could choose, I would be for profit. And, um, and the reason I would go for for profit is because, um, because, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm what they nowadays call a romantic capitalist, um, but I would just call myself a capitalist, but um, which is romantic capitalist is basically uh, the, the, you know, the basic, basic idea of capitalism is that uh, it's very beautiful, you know, is that you, um, you invest in something, you, you commit a certain amount of, of money and resources into something uh, or into someone that you believe in, because you believe that tomorrow will be uh, will be better than today, right? That that is the, the basic premise of capitalism, and it's it's a shame that you know over time, um, our the, the financial value has become decoupled from the uh, from the actual value that people are getting out of it, uh, which means that you know yeah we've created kind of this this very abstract system that is not in every sense. Um, uh, still supporting, uh, you know, uh, the betterment of humanity. But I believe that we can recouple these two, and 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 that is that is just up to our morality, right? I don't really see that much wrong with, well, the the basic mechanisms of the system. Uh, there there is quite a bit wrong with with the, uh, how it's you know how it's operated now. But I don't see much wrong with the basic mechanisms of the system of capitalism. Um, and I think it comes down to mindset. I think if we, you know, uh, again, capitalism is, is, a, is a tool of humanity. It's actually the, the first artificial intelligence uh, or collective intelligence that humanity has created because it, it very efficiently is a decentralized way of computing value of, of companies all around the world. There's this interesting research that, um, that showed that uh, a New York Times headline is processed into the value of every company in the world within 15 minutes. And that's, you know, um, and that's, that's only possible because we have this decentralized system. You know, the communists try to make a centralized system that basically uh, tries to govern all the, all the different parts and that completely collapsed, right? They, they, they visited, and now I'm saying a lot, is a very long-winded answer, but I think this is a very interesting topic to me. So at a certain point uh, uh, during the reign of communism in, in Russia, uh, one of their uh, ministers or something like that, uh, I think minister of agriculture or, or bread or something like that, he visited London and then he saw nobody starving and he saw, you know, all these bread stores that were just uh, working fine. And he asked the people there, like, so, so, who is your who is your minister of uh, of bread? I want to speak to him. And he's and they said, well, we we don't have one. And and he said, well, well, how do you organize this then? Yeah, well, we don't. It just organizes itself, you know. And that's the brilliant thing of 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 capitalism and free and the free market. And I think I think with the right mindset, um, this can be an incredibly powerful, the most powerful way to to create a quick change and um and to come back to the you know to the original point i think we need a very rapid change in education right now that can scale very quickly and if we're going to do this through the route of of non-profit then we have to rely on on either donations or you know governments making this change and i think this is just not going to go fast enough so that's why i really believe in for-profit solutions yeah, I think, uh, Pastor, just to quickly say something with that, I, I think it's it's what you call about this decoupling, uh, because, you know, this decoupling of profit and purpose. Yeah. So the, the non-profit is also, it's all about, you know, getting funding from somewhere, you know, that there is investment that you're getting from somewhere, but that a yeah. non-profit is driven by, by, by purpose. And, 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 and yeah, so, so it's a, it's a different mindset towards, what you invest in yeah uh, because but, if you if you do a, a profit focus then then you know it's all about it's all about the money that you make uh, oh, so no. it's not a mindset change towards purpose i don't know um well it's it's uh you can be a not for profit without being a non-profit right so so maybe it would be more accurate to say we're a not for profit um but but that, but that, you know, that, yeah. So, so maybe, maybe the, the, the most interesting discussion would be between non-profit and not for-profit. Mm -hmm. 
because I, I think everybody can agree that that just for profit is exactly you know what we're talking about this decoupling of, of our value systems. So I don't think anybody can really argue for just for profit as in like as the goal to make profit. Um, so so but but I, I guess you guys have to figure that out what this yeah, question you're but gonna I, have. I think that this is indeed a very interesting discussion.